Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'd like to welcome you to Bob Weber Auto Mart on Douglas Avenue here in Racine across from Douglas Park. We specialize in one-year-old, low mileage, almost new cars. And if you'd like to stop by and see them or see them on our website, BobWeberAutomart.com, we can save you between five dollars and $10,000 on your next almost new car purchase. I'm Michael Burke and this is Money Talks. Hi, my guest today is the founder and executive director of Racine Vocational Ministry, located in downtown Racine, Jim Schatzman. Uh, Jim, thanks for being on the show. We're not going to talk about RVM, which I'll abbreviate mm -hmm. throughout, um, so much as a particular new program of a, your entrepreneurial program for mm -hmm. ex-cons. Um, but very briefly, for those who don't know, what is Racine Vocational Ministry and how is it funded? Uh, Racine Vocational Ministry was founded in 2002. Uh, essentially to help folks who are falling between the gaps of social services uh, find employment. Uh, folks, more specifically, parolees, uh, right? Yes, but, but even broader. Oh, it, really? it, Yeah, the program oh. is open to anybody who can come in. Oh. Um, but uh, over the years, we have really begin, begun to uh, develop some programming on people who are returning from prison. Okay, okay. Um, so let's talk about this new, what's the name of the new program that is designed to uh, allow ex-cons to start up little mm -hmm. businesses if, they, if they're yep. inclined to. It's called the Second Chance Enterprise Opportunities uh, uh, as CEO. Uh, and it's a collaboration of Racine Vocational Ministry, our specific, our Second Chance program, and uh, SCORE, the Service Corps of Retired Executives. Mm -hmm. you, uh, I, I've written about this program when it uh, was pretty much in its infancy, mm -hmm. and it's not way beyond that yet. No. Um, but um, you draw some really interesting parallels between how how criminals are already entrepreneurs. Why don't you yeah, and, draw and, that and, in for us? And let, me, let me unpack that just a bit. Um, what's really happening is that uh, uh, we did a study a few years back on, on our folks who were coming out of prison, and uh, uh, it's a pretty sophisticated study, and it, 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 it assessed things that, that they were good at and, and aptitudes that they had, um, and it's used throughout the industry. Um, and we found a particularly high entrepreneurial uh, uh, scores across, uh, across all of our, our prison reentry folks. Um, it's not real surprising as you think about it. Uh, a lot of these folks have been very resourceful in how they make their money, and sometimes it's been the backbone of their criminal activity, whether it's been selling stolen cars or selling uh, drugs. Mm -hmm. You have to know your product. You've got to know your market. You've, you've got to have people who report to you who do what they're supposed to do at the time they're supposed to do it, and they manage their money. And uh, some of them are better or worse at this, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, there is a certain overlap of skills, one that's pretty antisocial and is destructive to the community, and one that, of course, can be very beneficial to themselves if they can channel it in more pro-social ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so how does this program work? Quite simply, what we're do, beginning to do is we're beginning to ask folks who are coming in, um, you know, they're going to have challenges finding work. They've just come out of mm -hmm. prison. Often their work, get, their work histories are very, very sketchy. Uh, and their opportunities to compete on a high level with everybody who's out of work at this time, the chances are not very good. I mean, they're really working an uphill battle. And so we've begun to ask them, you know, do you have any business aspirations? Have you had an, ever had a dream of what you might want to do if somebody just dropped, you know, all the resources in your lab? What would you, what would you like to do? Um, and so we're starting to get some pretty interesting ideas. This is a business I thought about, and it could be from something as simple as running my own barber shop to uh, selling hair care products or running a bakery or doing, you know, a, 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 one, of, one of our guys is trying to do some uh, modifications to small motors and they're doing a, a search on that to see if anything's been done before. And so we're starting to ask the question, which is actually surprising our population. They, you're asking me what I would love to do. <laughs> you're not yeah. telling me I'm, I'm gonna go work in, in uh, you know, warehousing for 750 an hour the rest of my life. You, you have a, so we're starting to support those dreams that they might have. 
Uh, how, many guys have, their passion? how many guys have said, that's kind of interesting, let me find out more? Uh, it's interesting because in this infancy, like you said, it's a very new program. Uh, we've had 12 people so far who have mm-hmm. said, I have an interest, I've had some ideas. Um, in others, uh, clients, I think we planted some seeds. Uh, I, I mean, you'd be surprised, maybe you wouldn't be surprised, how little people have thought about what they want to be when they grew up, when they spent their whole mm-hmm. lives in criminal behavior. Um, so they, they didn't lie on their cots in prison just thinking about what they might do <laughs> after they were, they were th- They were dreaming about free air, as they call it, uh, having the opportunity to breathe this free air like you and I breathe. Uh-huh. Uh, sometimes they're just, you know, they're anxious to get back to their families. Sometimes they have young children they haven't seen in years. That, those are the things that obsess them. Very rarely is it... Uh, job prospects or yeah. in general I'm going to get out and get a job I'm going to take care of my family I'm going to do what I need to do and then you say what do you want to do they go I don't know hmm. really I don't know they don't have any skills very often and they haven't they haven't pursued a lot of legal work and so they don't have a lot of framework for what to do other than what their buddy might have done at some point now I think you said you had about a dozen guys who uh, you, you did mm-hmm. say that um, mm-hmm. who said oh that sounds interesting um, and they've taken some steps along the way toward fleshing that out. So what are the steps? What's the very first step? very first step is having this conversation with your case manager to say, these are some ideas I've had, uh, this is what I'd like to do. And the case manager at that point begins to do a little pre-work. And we're learning in this first step that the pre-work is probably more important than the post-work. The pre-work is, here's what a business plan might look like. Be prepared to work harder than you've ever worked in your whole life. Mm. Uh, you know, this is not going to be like working for somebody eight hours or even 12 and then going home. Running your own business is a 24-7, 365 a day year obsession. And if it's not, it's going to fail. Do a lot um, of guys just drop out right then there? Uh, not right away. Okay. Uh, but as this becomes more real, there is a predictable uh, kind of washout rate as, mm-hmm. as, as, it, as you as the score counsel, for example, saying, well, okay, where's your business plan? We've talked about this. Who have you talked to? Have you talked to the 15 or 20 people? I've asked you to talk to to kind of bounce this idea off of and see how it works. Their and, networks and, aren't very rich. And so they sometimes fail because their networks are so fractured. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the washout rate would be tremendous, even in broader society when they walk into a room and start finding out what it, what it would take to run their own business. Absolutely. And if you add to that... Uh, that a lot of these guys have, they're, they're on opposite ends of the spectrum. Either they're so grandiose and they're thinking that they're sure that whatever they touch is going to turn to gold. <laughs> and when it doesn't turn to gold in, in 25 minutes, they get frustrated. Or they're so accustomed to things failing that they, they have an idea, but they're not really confident it's going to be able to go through. So there's a mm-hmm. lot of massaging, uh, hand-holding, coaching, encouraging that has to go on. In, in, a, in an area where you kind of can expect, like you said, in the general population, there's mm-hmm. going to be some failure. Yeah. Now, uh, so what, uh, what progress have these guys made? And, and talk about some of the ones who have, mm-hmm. have kind of dropped off. Yep. Of the 12 that are in the program, uh, we've had three of them really slow down because they got their first jobs. Mm. Uh, uh, all three of them, first legitimate jobs ever. And they have severely underanticipated uh, uh, the amount of energy it takes to work full time. Uh, one guy just talks about going home and wanting to sleep on the couch like an old man. He said, I, "I've never worked so hard in my whole life," you know. Uh, and, and so it, it's that adjustment which mm-hmm. has caused the bottleneck with the portion. Uh, we've had three or four who just haven't had uh, the soft skills to just simply stay in touch with their score counselor. And their counselor oh. said, you know, I'm working harder than you are. Oh. I, I'm going to wait for you now. And so we have a, uh, about three of these guys that the counselors are just simply waiting for, oh. waiting uh-huh. to do something. They're, they've, they've laid it in their lap. The next step is theirs. All right. uh, we have uh, three who have uh, uh, done their uh, at some level in their business plan. Uh, one of them is uh, pursuing uh, uh, an inner city uh, bakery concept. Another one is pursuing uh, hair care products, uh, specifically for African Americans. Setting up his, his own shop. Setting up his own shop, mm-hmm. and it's a it's it's a niche that that uh, he's pursuing is in in a kind of a for us by us kind of model. You know that, that they're not going to go to Kmart and buy their supplies. Mm-hmm. They're going to buy mm-hmm. them from somebody in the neighborhood who knows what they want, who's going to react as a small business person to mm-hmm. trends and, mm-hmm. and, and needs of their customers. And also an interesting part of his particular business plan is he wants to give 10% of his profits back to the community mm-hmm. and find a way to, to invest those and, and pay forward instead of destroying the community as mm-hmm. he did as a youngster. He'd like to do something to rebuild it. Mm-hmm. And so that's been a very interesting part of that concept. 
So you got the bakery concept, the hair care, and what's the and a gentleman, one of our gentlemen was looking at an innovation on a, a small motor concept, and um, an inventor, uh, type? an inventor type, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so he, he, what, it was not what the score counselor had expected, and so he said, well, we need to probably stop for a minute, keep that concept. And look and see if anybody's done it already, yeah. is doing it already, right. you know. And at the very least, maybe if it's if it's viable at all, let's talk to some folks at a company like uh, you know Briggs and Stratton R and D and see if there's any interest in the concept and mm-hmm. how it might move forward. So, those are the kinds of things that are yeah happening. interesting uh, mix there. Um, of course, starting a business takes money. Where would these guys get loans? Uh, there are uh, small business loans through the state of Wisconsin. Uh, WIBIC has been, uh, the Wisconsin Women's Business Initiative has been very aggressive about reaching out to minorities, uh-huh. uh, both men and women. Uh, and and uh, uh, one of our participants has already begun talking with WIBIC about the possibility of doing some funding. They would be held to the same standards as anybody else, right? That's a very interesting point. The standards don't change. And, and the score counselors are very interesting. They're, they're not used to working with this demographic at all. And we've had a lot of conversations back and forth about what it means to, to work with a, a, a group that by disposition is antisocial mm-hmm. and is learning more pro-social behaviors as they go. And we're catching them early in their change process. And so this is not the typical college graduate they're working with who's got an idea or the Mr. Fix-It man who's, you know, who watched his dad go to work every day. This is an entirely different demographic. Mm-hmm. I think the dynamic of how they interact is going to be a learned process. Uh, we've already had one meeting just on that aspect. What is it like to work with uh, returning felons as opposed to who you've worked with in the past. And I'm gathering information saying, what's different for you? What, what are you sensing and how can we make this interaction more robust and, and, and more uh, less laden with barriers? I have two, I think about two last questions for you. Um, one is, does this program now just being maybe six months old mm-hmm. look like a program that's going to be sustainable and bear some fruit? Here's what I want to say about that. I, we are committed to it, okay. and we're committed to, to staying in their bumps and all, warts and all, uh, uh, explosions and all. We are committed because we believe that this is an, an important aspect of empowering people who are come out of prison to re-engage their community in a healthy way. So we're going to stick with it for a while. We've asked the score counselors to hang in this, hang in there with us with expected failures. Like you said, they're going to happen in the, in, in the regular business. We expect it to be higher here. Mm-hmm. Hang in there with us. The other side of that is that... that I have a dream that that this is going to be a form of economic development in our community and that folks are going to create businesses in some of our most impoverished neighborhoods in the community and that over time, maybe 10, 12, 15 years, we're going to see a business or two every couple of years after this kind of incubation period where we get the ball rolling and every year or so you're going to see a new business open up in the inner city, a small business that has a unique niche that will support that neighborhood and be supported by that neighborhood. And it's just a dream that I have at RBM and, and I'm, I'm I'm really passionate about that. And you anticipated my second question because you talk about this as being potentially transformative in the neighborhoods because you put it, as you put it, kids, I'll let you finish the sentence, but instead of walking past... Instead of walking past an open building that's been, you know, is is being... Uh, taken over by, by as, as a crack house. They're walking by a corner grocery store or a barber shop that their uncle or auntie may be, may be running, changing the dynamic of what these kids see when they walk yeah. to school waiting for the school bus. And they don't have to be huge manu- uh, factories that can just be, like you say, the, the little <laughs> corner uh, businesses. Small business is the backbone of the American economy. It mm-hmm. always has been. I mean, we see the IBMs and the GMs, and those are the companies that get the headlines, but it's the small businesses that are the backbone of the American yeah. economy and it's also what enables kind of a unique American entrepreneurial spirit and I want to connect people back to that well Jim Schatzman I know I know you're going to be able to do good things uh, can just tell by your level of passion thanks a lot for being on Money Talks thanks a lot for watching thanks to our producer Greg Shaver and um, we'll see you next time thank you Mick Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'd like to welcome you to Bob Weber Auto Mart on Douglas Avenue here in Racine, across from Douglas Park. We specialize in one-year-old, low-mileage, almost new cars. And if you'd like to stop by and see them or see them on our website, bobweberautomart.com, we can save you between five and $10,000 on your next almost new car purchase.